أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسم صدق الله العظيم أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس قلوا مما في الأرض حلالا طيبا ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين انما يامركم بالسوء والفحشاء وان تقولوا على الله ما لا تعلمون فاذا قيل لهم اتبعوا ما انزل الله قالوا بل نتبع ما الفينا عليه ابانا اولو كان اباؤهم لا يعقلون شيئا ولا يهتدون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارحمنا بالقران العظيم واجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه امين يا رب العالمين before we start with this 21st section of surah al baqarah please note two points as i told you that the four strands of the issues which are discussed in the second part one is regarding the sharia ahkam ul sharia number two point that just as we find in the end in the last part of the first section first half of the surah there was mention of the pagan arabs the idolaters the mushrikeen of the arabian peninsula in the same way in the second half also we find in this ruku a reference to them and that is just as i said that in the previous section is the last mention of the ahlul kitab of the jews and christians in this suratul baqara in this way in this section this is the last reference to the pagan arabs to the idol worshiping arabs in this surah يا ايها الناس كلوا مما في الارض حلالا طيبا او بيبل او مان كايند ايت فروم وات ايفر از ان ذا ارث ويتش از حلال لوفل اند طيبا اند جود اند ريفايند ولا تتبعوا خطوات الشيطان اند دونت فولو ذا فور ستبس اوف شيطان انه لكم عدو مبين فيريلي هي از for you a clear enemy now two things kulu mimma fi al-ard halalan tayyiban whatever is halal permissible eat it don't refrain from eating anything which is declared by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as permissible and halal shaitan attacks human beings in two ways he will persuade you to eat eat what is haram and then he will give you different waswasa different ideas about things which are halal and he will ask you not to eat them not to go near them so actually keep both these things in your view kulu mimma fi al-ard halalan tayyib or eat whatever is halal and whatever is tayyib whatever is good in all the earth that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you with food and don't follow the footsteps of shaitan he is for you a clear enemy inma yamurukum bisu he actually for for he actually ordains you he commands you to whatever is evil wal fahsha what is sinful wa an taqulu ala allah ma la ta'lamun and he also commands you to say something about allah what you not know without any knowledge and it has another meaning also to ascribe to allah something about which you have no knowledge that allah has declared this thing to be haram 
Whereas we don't find anything in the Quran or in any revealed scripture that this is haram. This has been declared haram for Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you know, he will ascribe these things. Just as the people in the Arabian Peninsula, they have declared many things to be haram. The Jews had declared the meat of camel to be haram, although there was no proof. Only Hazrat Yaqub didn't like it personally. It was his liking or disliking, that's all, personal liking or disliking. But they declared it to be haram. In the same way, there were animals in the Arabian Peninsula who were, who were given the names, you know, for certain gods, that this is reserved for that god and this is reserved for that god. And certain animals who had brought forth some offspring, some number of offsprings. After them now they are haram. You cannot take any service from them, you cannot eat their flesh. Although those animals were halal in themselves. So all these things are covered by these ayat. And you ascribe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those things which you don't know. And when it is said to them, Follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, what He has revealed. They say, instead, we shall follow on what we found our forefathers. Whatever they were doing, whatever their practices, we shall follow them. What? Will they follow their fathers, forefathers? Although it may be that their fathers were not knowing anything, but not understanding anything. Wala yahtadun, and they were not the guided people, they were not of the guidance. Wa masalil ladina kafaru ka masalil ladiyan iqub ma la yasmau illa dua wa nida. And the likeness of these people, these kuffar, who worship idols, and who call them their gods, their idols, for help, and pray to them, prostrate before them, their likeliness is to the people, to a shepherd, who calls his flock of sheep, although this flock of sheep, they understand nothing. But only that someone is crying and someone is, you know, calling, except that. So just like animals, these idols even don't understand, don't hear. But they are calling them and they are praying to them. Summun bukmun umyun faum la yaqilun. They are, they hear nothing, they are dumb, they are deaf, they are blind. So they do not understand. Ya ayyuhu al-lazina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma'aladaknakum. Again, repeating. O oh, you who believe. In the beginning it was ya ayyuhu al-nas. The address was to the whole of humanity. It was about in the generalized terms. Now it is particularly the Muslims are addressed here. Ya ayyuhu al-lazina amanu kulu min tayyibati ma'aladaknakum. Eat from the good things with which we have provided you. Bashkuru lillah. And be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In kuntubi yahu ta'abudun. If you really worship Him and obey Him. In nama harrama alaykum al baytata. He has declared for you haram and He has forbade you from eating what? Four things. Al maita. The flesh of dead animals. Wa dama. And the blood. Wa lahm al khinzir. And the flesh of swine. وَمَا أُهِلَّ بِهِ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ And whatever was sacrificed in the name of anything else, anyone else except Allah. وَمَنِ اسْتُرَّ غَيْرَ بَاغٍ وَلَا عَادٍ Then whosoever is forced by necessity, he has nothing else to eat, and he is dying of hunger, he can eat from these things even. Although these things have been declared to be haram, najis, in itself, in themselves, but a person who has nothing to eat, who cannot find anything more to eat, any other, other thing to eat, and he is going to die of hunger, he is allowed to eat from these also. There are two conditions. He, there must be no craving for it. You say that I am, I am eating pork because I have no other thing to eat here. No. You are not going to die without taking pork here. Then maybe that you have some craving within your heart for this, and you are only, you know, using it as a, uh, only a, a lame excuse and nothing else. 
There should be no craving for it, no liking for it. Wala adin. And only that much amount can be taken which will save you from dying. Not more. فَمَنِ اسْتُرَّ غَيْرَ بَعْدٍ وَلَا عَادٍ فَلَا اسْمَ عَدَيْهِ On such a person, if he takes some of these things which are forbidden, which are haram in themselves, there is no sin on him. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving and he is merciful. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا عَدُوَ اللَّهُ بِنَ الْكِتَابِ Verily, those who hide and conceal what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down from the book, in the book, by Ashtaruna Behi Salaam and Thaman and Qalila, and they are purchasing, like accepting in exchange, very low price. Ulaika ma yaakuluna fi butunihim illa nar. They are the people who are not eating into their stomachs and bellies except fire, fire of hell. Although they might be eating very tasty foods, but this is actually the fire of hell, the cinders, burning cinders of hell which they are putting in their stomachs and bellies. وَلَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَابَةِ Allah will not speak to them on the day of judgment, on the day of, on the doomsday. وَلَا يُزَكِّيهِمْ And He will not purify them. وَلَهُمْ عَذَابُ الْعَلِيمِ And for them is a very painful torment. أُولَائِكَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَبُ الضَّلَالَةَ بِالْهُدَى They are the people who have purchased zalala, error, and going astray in exchange for hidayah. Hudan, in exchange for guidance. They have given up guidance, accepted zalala. Wal azab abil maqfira. They have exchanged azab for maqfira. They could have maqfira of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they have given it up and they have chosen the punishment and the torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fama asbarahum ala nar. How bold they are for the fire of hell. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ نَزَلَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ And this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down His book with haqq, with whole truth, the total truth. وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِي الْكِتَابِ لَفِي شِقَاقٍ بَعِيدٍ And verily, surely those who are making differences concerning this book, who are differing concerning this book, they are in a very far away place. Enmity, shikaqin ba'id. They have gone far away in enmity and arrogance. Now comes a very big ayah of the Quran and a very grand ayah. It gives us a very comprehensive view of what is the virtue, what's the concept of virtue and goodness in Islam. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّانْ تُوَلُّوا وَجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ It's not all charity, all good that you turn your faces towards the east and west. The same subject, you know. There are two full sections of the Qur'an, of this Surah Al-Baqarah, which discuss directly the issue of the changing of the direction of the Qibla. But two sections before we found the beginning. لِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِقُ وَالْمَغْرِبِ فَعَلَ مَا تُوَلُّوا فَسَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ And two sections later, we are again having the mention of the same issue. Don't think that this is all virtue and this is most important. You have attached, you know, out of proportion importance to this issue. The real charity, real good, real virtue is not that you turn your faces towards the east or west. But actually charity and virtue is the virtue of a person. Man amana billahi wal yawmil akhire wal malaikati wal kitabi wal nabiyyin. The first precondition of virtue and goodness and all good is to have faith in Allah who has belief and faith in Allah wal yawmil akhir and the last day wal malaikati and the angels wal kitabi and the books wal nabiyyin and the prophets. And number two, what is the manifestation, practical manifestation of this iman? Number one, وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَىٰ وَالْيَتَامَىٰ وَالْوَسَاكِينَ وَابْنَ السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الْرِقَابِ They give away their own belongings, their own wealth, although they themselves love it, in spite of their love for it. This mal, this wealth is definitely dear to their hearts, but despite this love for them, for this property and wealth, they spend it 
and they spend it for whom? The will qurba, close in relationship. Wal yatama and the orphans, wal masakin and the poor, wabl sabil and the wayfarer, wal sailin and the beggars, wal fil riqab, and in releasing the people from the bondage of slavery and maybe also of debt. Wabl sabil wal sailin wal fil riqab, wa aqam al salah. Second practical manifestation, and he established the regular prayer, prayers. Wa'at al zakah, and he prayed the charity, the regular charity, the compulsory charity. And number four, wal mufu na bi ahdhi miza ahdu, and those who fulfil their words and promises and contracts when they have made any contract, any promise. And number five, and least, last but not the least. Rather, we should say the most important was sabirina fil baasai wa barai wa hin al baas. Those who show perseverance and patience in distress and affliction, and at the time of conflict and war, and they are steadfast, they are perseverance, they show patience, and they are ready to risk everything for the cause of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون. They are the people who are really truthful and they are the people who are really pious, who are really God-fearing. Now this is, as you have seen, this ayah, the name of this ayah can be Ayatul Bir, the ayah which gives us a comprehensive view of what is Bir, what is virtue, what is, what is you know, charity, and this gives us a full. Character picture of a person, because you know the goodness or iman, real faith, it permeates the whole personality of a person. The whole personality is changed if there is real iman in the heart. Walakin al birra ma nama na billah wal yom il akhir wal malaikat wal kitab wal nabiyin. That real iman in the heart will change and transform the whole character, the whole personality of a man. And that has been described in five terms. Number one, that he gives away his wealth, although it is dear to him, for the needy, the poor, the orphans, and so on. Number two, established prayer, pays the regular zakat, and he fulfills the promises that he makes, the contracts, whatever he has, he has given word, he sticks to them. And number and finally, then he is steadfast in the struggle between evil and good. He fights the evil, he challenges the evil, and if there is time to have patience, if there is persecution, is there an opposition, and he has he is afflicted with distress, pain, he has to get, go hungry, he has has to to take risks about his own life. Wala nablu wana kum be shayi min al khawfi wal jure wa nafsi min al amwali wal anfusi wal samarat, which we read that, that ayah in the 19th section. So that gives us a total picture of a man, of a person, of a character who is liked by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He is actually a good person. He is actually the one whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala loves. Ya yuh aladin amanu kate malakum al tasas. Oh, you who believe, now there is again, you know, some commandments about muamalat, the affairs of the world. About the cases in, you know, murder. There, because in every human society there can be killing, slaying, and murder. Ya yu aladin amanu kote baalekum ul qisas of il qatla. Oh, you who believe the law of equitable retribution concerning the slain, the murdered one, that has been made essential for you. Kote baalekum. It has been made imperative on you. You have to abide by this law of equitable retribution concerning the cases of slaying and killing and murdering. Al Hurr bil Hurr, a free man in the place of a free man, he will have to die. If he had committed the murder, he will have to die, or he will have to pay the blood money. Wal Ab bil Ab, and if it is a slave, then the slave will die. Not that because the slave, who he has he has killed a free man. So he is not equal to his life. No, a man is equal to every other man as regards the life. While unsa be unsa, and if the murderer is a woman, then that woman will go. 
فمن اوفي له من اخي شيء سوسو ايفر از يو نو از فسو فور هوم سو ايفر سمثنگ از ديمينيش فروم هيز برادر ناو دي برادر اوف دي سلين اوف دي مردرد پرسن اوف دي كيلد پرسن دي ار كيت اند كيل اف دي ار ريدي تو پاردن هيم ات از از اف دي دي هاف دان سم فيفر تو هيم فمن اوفي له من اخي شيء if they have accepted the blood money that is also a mercy to to him to the murderer to the killer fatbaun bil maruf so then it should be given alleviation from your lord it should be in the proper way adaun ilaihi bi ihsan and that blood money should be paid to them in a very beautiful way not grudgingly adaun ilaihi bi ihsan zalika tafifum mir rabbiku wa rahma and this is an alleviation a decrease a leniency from your lord and a mercy for many tada ba'da zalika whosoever transgresses even after that he has accepted the blood money also and he is after the taking the life of the killer also he so ever whosoever does both the things fa lahu azabun alim for him there is a very painful punishment so this is the beauty of the islamic law about these cases of murder you know If somebody is murdered, he has gone. Now, even if the killer is killed, the family of the murdered person gets nothing. But if you know this family pardons the killer, now this killer, you know, this murderer is under an ehsan of those people, and you know this will be good for both the parties. Otherwise, especially the tribal societies. killings go on revenge taken from one tribe then the people of the other tribe kill so many people of that tribe then again this tribe takes the revenge and kills so many people of that tribe it goes on you know in dynasties it goes on generation after generation it goes on but this law you know it can produce a full stop it can place a full stop on all these things because now the duty of the state is to procure and hold the and get that that murderer bring him to book now you place him at the mercy of the family of the peep of the man who was murdered that family has the authority if they want to forgive him they can forgive him if they want to accept blood money they can accept blood money so that is actually the beauty and the wisdom of the divine law in the case of murder wala kun fil qisas hayat ya ulil albab لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And for you, O people of understanding, there is life in this law of equitable retribution concerning the slain, so that you may save, you may be saved. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذَا أَذَرَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ إِنْ تَرَكَ خَيْرًا الْوَسِيَّةِ It has been made obligatory upon you, if death comes and comes, the time of dying comes of a person amongst you, if he is leaving behind him some wealth that he should prepare and give a will wasiya lil walidain for the parents wal aqrabin and the close in kith and kin bil maruf in a proper way in a proper manner in a reasonable equitable manner haqqan lil muttaqin it's a duty upon all people who fear allah subhanahu wa taala actually this ayah has been abrogated in total because when in surah an-nisa the law of inheritance was revealed in this detail this is the portion of the father of the deceased this is the this is the portion of the mother of the deceased and this is the portion of the daughter this is the portion of the of the sons and if there is none among the parents or the offsprings then you know this this wealth can go to the brothers and sisters and so on when that law was revealed this thing was abrogated now it is not necessary for any muslim to prepare a will because all whatever he leaves behind him it will be distributed according to the law of the sharia law of inheritance but you know if somebody wants to make a will he can make up till one third of his property only and none of the inheritors the regular inheritors according to the islamic law he cannot be given anything in the will that is the portion that allah subhanahu wa taala has fixed they will get only the fixed portion this will can be only for other people some poor people some institutions 
some work of charity that can be given, you know, but up till the limit of one third of the total property, not all, not more than one third. So this is applicable only now to the one third of the property of a person who has died and rest of it will definitely be distributed according to the law, detailed law, which is revealed in Surah Nisa. So this, it can also be said that this ayah has been abrogated totally because it is no more essential, obligatory for a Muslim to have a will. So, Kotiba alaykum iza hadara hadakumul mawtu in talaka khairalil wasiyyah, this commandment has been abrogated in total. But a part of it has been retained by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is from sunnah. That if somebody wants to give something to in a will, then he can do it up till one third of his property. But then whosoever changes it, after he has listened to it, فَإِنَّمَا إِسْمُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يُبَدِّلُونَهُ So the sin of it will be on those who change it. A person is dying and he has given a will, supposedly verbally only, but the people who were there, they have now changed. They say, no, no, he said not that thing, but he said this thing. So now the person who has died is not responsible. He will not to be blamed on the day of judgment. It will be those who have changed his will, they will be brought to the book and they will be blamed. In the Allah Samiun Alim, verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala listens to everything and he knows everything. Faman Khafa min Musin Janafan, whosoever fears that the diseased person, the, the person who has died and who has given a will, Janafan or Isman, he has done some injustice in his will, or he has done some wrongdoing. If there is the fear that he has committed a mistake, he shouldn't have done this. It is unjust. The distribution that he has given in his will is not based on justice. Then there must be a dispute. Those who have been given less, they will stand and demand more. And then if they agreeably, if they change it, and they make, make, set it, the matter right by mutual consultation. فَأَصْلَحَ بَيْنَهُمْ فَلَا إِسْمَ عَلَيْهُ Then there is no sin on them. It is not sacrosanct that whatever the will is, it has to be implemented as such. No. If it is thought that it's, it is unjust, injustice has been done, and then now by mutual agreement, some adjustments are made, so there is no harm in it, and there will be no sin in it. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam. Now the other strength and that is of ibadat. Now psalm. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who profess to believe, keeping fast has been made mandatory for you, just as it was made mandatory for them who were before you. This was there in the Sharia of Moses salam also. Psalm was there in their Sharia. In the same way, now this Psalm, Siyam, keeping fast, has been made obligatory on you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you have real taqwa. So that you have self-control over your animal instincts. You have full control of your id and libido. أَيَّامَ مَعْدُودَاتِ As I told you, I think that this, this, these two ayat, they concern the first commandment that was given by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the people after hijrah, that every Muslim should keep three fasts every month, because the Arabs were not accustomed to fasting, so they were gradually accustomed to it, in in any manner that every month. Now you see, the month could be December when fasting is easy. The month could be July or August or May when the fasting is very difficult. So three days every month it becomes very easy. Different weathers, different seasons and only three days. But when it is full month it's not a simple case. It's definitely something very hard. So first order was for three days, 13th, 14th, 15th of every lunar month that was the commandment. That is why the words are used, ayyama madudat. They are a few days. Thirty days are not few days. 
30 days are quite a big number. Ayyama madudat, only a few days, three days. Saman kanam inkum marizan, and regarding these three days also, there are two concessions. Concession number one, whosoever may be from amongst you ill, sick, or ala suffering, or on some travel, faiddatu min ayyami nukhar, he can complete that number in other days. Three days, he can keep the fast in that month on any other three days. Number two, and on them who has the power to keep psalm, to keep fasting, they are not ill, they are not sick, they are not on traveling, and then they don't want to keep fast. There is a redemption for them that they should feed one poor person. And whosoever voluntarily does more good, well, it is good for him. If he feeds two or three or ten or twenty, well, he will get the reward on the Day of Judgment. If someone keeps the fast also, and also is feeding the hungry, well, he is doing it voluntarily. So there is no limit to the voluntary good deeds that a man can perform. Now this is the persuasion. Don't avail of this number two concession. There is the concession, but don't avail of it. If you fast, if you keep the fast, it is better for you. In kuntum ta'lamun, if you have the real knowledge. If you know what is really good for you, what is really beneficial for you. For because fasting, you know, that is beneficial for your ruh, for your spirit. And you need it. While you know if you have only given some, some charity and you have fed a few hungry people, well, that room will not get the food that would have given to him if you had fasted. Now comes the final commandment about the Shahr Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Shahr Ramadan al ladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Month of Ramadan is the month in which Qur'an was sent down. I had already discussed it in my preliminary lecture. Qur'an was sent down in two stages. Stage number one, from the Kitab al-Mahfuz, Lahim Mahfuz, Kitab al-Maknoon, Fi Ummil Kitab, to the first heaven, to the first sky. And that was done in total, at once, one piece, in one night, that night is Laylatul Qadr, and in one month, that was Ramadan. That is Inzal, Shahru Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fi al-Quran, inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. And second stage was that from there, the Archangel, Archangel Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam brought down Quran bit by bit, piece by piece, to the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this second stage took 22 years, beginning in the year 610 of Christian era and ending in the year 632 of the Christian era when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi died. So these are the two stages. شهر رمضان الذي انزل فيه القرآن خدا للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان and what is this Quran? the guidance for whole of humanity now we can very easily compare here we find guidance for whole of humanity and in the beginning of this surah was guidance for the muttaqeen خدا للمتقين how do you correlate this both? that in itself it is guidance it keeps and it holds it has the guidance for the whole of humanity. But you know, only those will be able to avail the guidance of Quran who have real taqwa in them, who are God-fearing, who want to save them, who have the real and living moral law within them. The sense, moral sense is there. They know what is bad, what is good. They want to be good. For them only, they can only avail the, from the guidance of this book. Khudal lillah se wabayyanat min al huda. And this guidance is in very clear terms, bayyanat, self-evident. Wal furqan, and the criterion between good and bad, evil and good, between false and real. Faman shahida min shahra fal yasum. Now whosoever of you witnesses this month, he has to keep fasting throughout the month. Fal yasum ho. This pronoun ho is going towards shahra Ramadan. The whole month of Ramadan you have to keep fasting. 
فمن كان مريضا او على سفر of the original two concessions one has been retained and that is why it has been repeated whosoever among you is ill or sick او على سفر or he is on some travel fa'id batu min ayyam ukhar he will complete the number if the number was 30 days of ramadan you have to complete 30 days if the number was that year 29 days of ramadan you have to complete complete 29 days that number of the month of ramadan has to be completed the second concession is now abrogated that is no more but here also we find you know from the wisdom of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he has retained for a, a very extreme cases a man who is very sick very sick and he cannot keep fasting there is fear that he may die and other a person he is suffering from a disease from which there is no hope of recovery and he cannot bear this hardship of fasting for them you know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has retained that option that in place of one fasting one day of fasting they can feed one poor person but not generally not the healthy people not the people who can who can go to fast they don't they cannot avail of this concession now this is gone forever yuridu allah bikum al yusra wa la yuridu bikum al usra allah intends for you easiness ease not difficulty don't be cruel to yourself if you are suffering from fever high fever don't keep the fast when allah subhanahu wa taala has given you the concession he intends for you ease not difficulty wala tukmilu al idda but anyhow you have to complete the figure the, the number now that is obligatory that that figure that number is to be completed wala tukabbiru allah ala ma hadakum and so that you glorify allah rather the word should be magnify allah takbir means to make something bigger and bigger allahu akbar allah is the greatest so now the saying allahu akbar this is takbir but actually only saying is not sufficient to make allah supreme to make the deen of allah supreme so that he is obeyed in all aspects of life it is actually takbir of the rabb that he is really accepted as great as the biggest as the greatest as the authority as the sovereign sovereignty blessed with him so actually this is takbir wala tukabbiru allah ala ma hadakum but this takbir in you know after the psalm after the month of ramadan when there is eid then we have special takbir in the salah of eid there are additional takbir this takbir saying allahu akbar is also takbir wala tukabbiru allah ala ma hadakum and this takbir is on the the guidance that allah subhanahu wa taala has given you you should magnify him glorify him on the guidance that he gave you the blessings of allah subhanahu wa taala that came to you in the form of quran wala lakum tashkurun and so that you can really be grateful to allah subhanahu wa taala now this has a very deep meaning as i told you man is composed of two constituent parts the animal existence the material existence and the spiritual existence both are self sufficient and independent joined together the tendencies of both are different rather opposite opposite to each other one has come from this earth from the clay of the earth from the crust of the earth the other has come from allah subhanahu wa taala ya saluna kali ruh kul ruh min amri rabbi our animal being the sources this earth and i everything that we need for this animal being for its feeding for its requirements all things come from there from the earth the food is coming from there everything which rejuvenates this body this animal existence coming from the earth and now for this ruh something that comes from him from whom the ruh has come that is the only thing that can give him it the strength the real life the vigor this ruh needs you know feeding and the food of this this ruh and this spirit is the word of allah subhanahu wa taala because it is in itself manifestation of the word of kun kun fayakun every ruh of ours is a word of kun from allah subhanahu wa taala and you know 
its strength would be, it will be strengthened, it will be revived, it will be rejuvenated, it will be revitalized by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by Quran. And that is what we are doing. Keeping the fast during the day and during the night we are awake with this Quran. Actually this is the two-pronged attack for this spiritual purification during the month of Ramadan. During the day you are with fast. You are suppressing your animal existence. You are weakening it. At least some weakening is there. Although the weather may be very good. But then starvation, refraining from food and drinking, it, it has that effect, definite effect. And then in the night, keep awake, stand, listen to Allah's kalam, His words, that it be absorbed in the soils of your hearts and, and your minds. And that is actually, then you will know what a big blessing this Quran is. And then you will be able to give the thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala proportionately. And the next result is, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ When the ruh awakens, when the ruh is revitalized, it wants to get nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to its real source. كُلُّ شَيْنْ يَرْجِعُ إِلَىٰ أَصْلِهِ This is the saying of the Arabic language. Everything wants to return to its own source. The source of this ruh is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when it is awakened and when it has been revitalized, it wants to be nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my bondsmen, ibadi, ask you about me, find me kareem. Tell them I am very near to them. I am not far off. I am very close to their hearts. I am nearer to them than their jugular veins. I am with them wherever they are. Huwa maakum ana maakuntum. He is with you wherever you are. I respond to the invocations. I respond to the prayers, supplications of my bondsmen. Where and when they call me, where and when they pray me, I listen to their prayers. I accept their prayers. I respond to their supplications and prayers. Now this is the other aspect as I told you today, that the relationship between Allah and His bondsman is two-sided. Faskuruni askurkum. Remember me, I will remember you. If you mention me in your heart, remember me in your heart, I will remember you in my heart. If you mention me in a gathering, I will mention you in a much higher and better gathering. Gathering of the Malaikatul Muqarrabun. I will mention my bondsman, my such and such bondsman. He's mentioning me, he's remembering me, he's preaching my word, he's teaching my and conveying my message. So I will be mentioning him. In the same way here, if you want that I should listen to your prayers, if you want that I should accept your prayers, if you want that I should grant your requests, you should also listen to me. You should also hearken me, hearken to me. You should also respond to me. You should also accept my commands. So they should also listen to me. They should also respond to me. They should also have faith in me. So that they are led aright and they go straight to the final destination when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be pleased with them. Razi Allahu anhum wa radu an. There will be a mutual pleasure pleasure of both. Allah will be pleased with them and they will be pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, the two-sided bilateral relationship. Radiallahu anhum wa radu an. Now this ayah has another aspect of importance. And that is that this is the biggest magna carta of the rights of human beings that was given to humanity 1400 years ago. Otherwise, human beings were at the mercy of people who said to them, well, we are intermediaries between you and Allah and your God. You have to please us before you can place your, your applications and your prayers and your wishes and your requests to Allah, to your God. All the peers, all the pundits, all the pujaris, you know this is P. Everywhere you will find this word, peer, 
पंडित पुजारी परोहत पोप और यू नो इट फ्रॉम पी एंड दी दे हैव बिन एक्सप्लाइटिंग ह्यूमैनिटी एक्चुअली दे हैव दिस इज द बिगेस्ट एक्सप्लाइटेशन वन एक्सप्लाइटेशन वॉज इन द इकोनॉमिक फील्ड थ्रू दी लैंड लॉर्ड्स थ्रू दी फ्यूडल्स थ्रू दी किंग्स दे आर एक्सट्रैक्टिंग टैक्सेस फ्रॉम दी पीपल पीपल आर वर्किंग हार्ड इन दी फील्ड बट वेन दिट इज हार्वेस्टेड the lion's share is taken by the landlord or the feudal the lord and the part biggest part goes to the king so these were the two exploitations the political exploitation of man and the religious exploitation of man you have to present here something that is why in the in that you know temple of uh, somnath do you the amount of wealth gold that was gathered over there where from did it come from people who had you know some applications some wishes they wanted to pray to their gods and they had to please you know the custodians of that temple first so that was actually and allah subhanahu wa taala has freed us pirane kalisa ko kalisa se utha do jo khaliq o makhluq mein hail rahe parde there shouldn't be any distances between the creator and the created they can communicate directly you can communicate with me wherever you like it's only you don't want to communicate with me because you are you have a guilty conscience because you know you are earning haram you are eating haram you don't have the face to face allah subhanahu wa taala you don't have the tongue to talk to him because you know everybody knows what he is he knows what i am therefore he wants you know some other ways by hip or crook you please some peer and you play something on the on the grave of some big waliullah and then all your wishes will be granted so that is actually a very cunning way of exploitation that has been given an end by this aya wa iza saala ka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb ujib da'wat ad-da'i zadan you need not go anywhere to call me you need not please anybody to call me to to be able to communicate communicate with me only whenever you like but with sincerity make a firm resolve i will respond to allah's call always i will listen to him i will obey him i will act according to his commandments and then talk to him he will listen to you he will grant your request by iza saala ka ibadi anni fa inni qareeb ujib da'wat ad-da'i zadan fal yastajibu li the second part of this covenant should be also fulfilled they also should listen to me hearken to me and they also should respond to me and they also should have real faith in me la allahum yarshudun so that they reach the final destination of success wa hilla lakum laylat as-siyam rafas ila nisaikum now this very lengthy aya it gives final rules and regulations about the fasting in islam because you know previously in the former muslim ummah there was no sahri no eating or drinking after you one said your night prayer for example after isha no eating nothing of the sort till the, the next maghrib when you know night starts again so the the fast covered the night as well as the day only for a little time between maghrib and isha you could you could eat and drink and nothing else here this now fasting has been reduced to only the day time from the dawn to the sunset so this is an then there was no sexual intercourse also permitted during the fasting because the night was also included in the fast so there could be no sexual intercourse between the husband and the wife so these things were there in uh, the pra- as practices among the jews and the muslim of madina they were seen that the psalm in the jews has these additional limitations so they thought that they are included in islamic laws also although there was no mention of it before in the quran either to the contrary or confirming those regulations but some people thought that it is not lawful it is not permissible to have sexual intercourse with their wives but still they were doing it so in a way they were betraying themselves they were doing khiyana with their own selves so allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned it first in this ayah and then you know given the final rules 
that this is the difference between the psalm of Islam and the psalm of the Jews of the previous Ummah. It has been made, declared lawful for you to have sexual contact with your wives during the nights of the, of the fasting. The fasting is for the day, not for the night. They are like a covering because just as the dress. They are like dress to you and you are like dress to them. This, this dress covers our body. So actually the intimacy between the dress and the body, so that has been referred to by this simile. They are like, are like dress to you and you are like the dress to them. Hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahunna. So this close affinity and proximity. Alam Allahu annakum kuntum takhtaluna anfusakum. It's in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that then you were committing khayanah with yourselves. You were betraying yourselves. You thought that this sexual intercourse is contrary to this psalm and still you were doing it. Only a few much might have been doing it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, mentions it. Because with reference to that, he is now giving the final rules about the psalm in Islam. Fataba alaykum, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your tawbah. He has relented towards you. He is lenient towards you. Fafa alaykum, and he has forgiven you. You have done a mistake, committed a mistake. You shouldn't have done this. Although you didn't know it, didn't know it for sure that it is haram. But you thought that it is haram and still you are, you are doing it. So actually you are betraying yourself. You are doing khayana, dishonesty with your own self. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has relented towards you and he has accepted your, your tawbah and he has forgiven you. فَالْآنَ بَاشِرُوهُنَّ Now you can have contact with them. وَبْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ And now you want to, you, you try to get what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you. Now this sexual intercourse, the result is offspring, the result is taskeen, litasqanu ilayha, everything that is contained in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not gone into details. But whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained for you, in this contact between the spouses, you can get it, you can have it. وَابْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ فَالْآنَ بَاشَرُوهُنَّ وَابْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ وَكُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَكُمُ الْخَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنَ الْخَيْطِ الْأَسْوَدِ مِنَ الْفَجْرِ And you can keep on eating and drinking till the white thread of the morning of the dawn becomes evident to you from the black thread of the night. This is again, you know, an expression for the dawn when that whiteness appeared on the horizon. It's like a thread which is separating darkness from the from the, this thread, you know, it is separating the horizon. When the white thread of white thread of the dawn becomes evident to you from the black thread of the night. Now when dawn has appeared, stop eating, stop drinking. Now till the setting of sun setting, till the coming of the night, you have to complete this song. Now all the restrictions are there. No eating, no drinking, no sexual contact, nothing of the sort. All things prohibited. وَلَا تُبَاشِرُوهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاقِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ An additional limitation. And that is when you are more taqif. What is the etikaf? To, con to confine yourself to the limits of a masjid, an area, but not the whole of masjid, where really prayers are held. Because there are additional things, amenities, they are not included in this di in the definition of mos masjid. Masjid is only the place where people really bow and prostrate and where they offer their prayers. So you restrict yourself, cut off from the other worldly, your routine activities, and now you are absolutely with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Him, praying Him, reading Quran, doing whatever He has commanded to do. So all these things you can do. But you know, you can't go out of these limits of the mosque, except when there is real need. If you have to call to the, to respond to the call of the nature, you can go to the bathroom, the washroom, that's all. But otherwise, you cannot go out. 
सो वेन यू आर मोत इन दी मसाजिद वन तुम आके फून अफिल मसाजिद देन यू कैन नॉट हैव एनी सेक्शुअल कॉन्टेक्ट विद योर वाइफ इवन ड्यूरिंग द नाइट ऑफ दिस सॉन्ग दीज आर फॉर द टेन डेज यू नो द मसनूर ए तकाफ द लास्ट टेन डेज आफ्टर द नाइट ऑफ द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट बिगिन यू नो दिस इज द बिगिनिंग ऑफ ए तकाफ मसनूर ए तकाफ नफल ए तकाफ वॉलेंट्री ए तकाफ कैन बी फॉर स्मॉलर पीरियड कैन बी एट एनी टाइम ड्यूरिंग एनी मंथ एनी डे बट यू नो दिस मसनूर ए तकाफ विच वॉज द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ द प्रॉफिट सल्लाम इट इज लास्ट टेन डेज ऑफ एवरी मंथ ऑफ रमजान वन तुम आ कि फूल अफिल मसाजि तिल का हदूद उल्लाह दीज आर द लिमिटेशन लेड डाउन बाई अल्लाह सुबहान वाला फला तक रबूहा वेरी ब्यूटिफुल डोंट गो नियर दैन एट सर्टन प्लेस इन कुरान देर इज लाता तदूहा डोंट ट्रांसग्रेस द लिमिट ऑफ अल्लाह सुबहान वाला ट्रांसग्रेसिंग यू गो आउट फ्रॉम द लिमिट इट समथिंग एल्स डोंट गो नियर दैन Keep at a safe distance. If yes, you are. If you are very near to it, then it's just possible that you can just cross it. Maybe unknowingly you have crossed the limits because you are very near to the final limits. So keep at a safe distance from the limits that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has laid down. Till ka hudu dullah hai falat ta qurabuha. These are the limitations laid by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So don't go near them. Keep yourself at a safe, safe distance from them. قزال کا یبین اللہ آیات ہی لناس لال لہم یتقون ان دس وے اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی explains him his ayat all his commandments are being explained everything which was doubtful about this this ibadah this mode of worship of psalm now it has been cleared all the things have been explained قزال کا یبین اللہ آیات ہی لناس In this manner, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala makes His commands, His ayat clear for the people. La Allahu Ya Taqoon, so that they can be saved. They don't transgress the laws. They don't transgress the the hudud of Allah, the limitations of Allah unknowingly. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made everything clear and plain. Wala taqulu amwala kum baina kum bil baqi, and don't eat up one others one another's property. And wealth will bath in on through false methods, illegal methods, unlawful methods. This can be in many ways stealing. You have stolen some property of somebody else. It is illegal. If he gives you himself in gift, you can take it. You can use it. If he has gifted it to you, if he has given you some present, you can take it. You can use it. But if you have stolen it, then it is haram for you. It is impermissible. It is it is not uh, lawful for you to use it. Stealing. In the same way, now a particular case is being given here. But to do behind the hukam, la ta kulu amwala kum baila kum bil baatil. Don't eat up one another's property and wealth through illegal means, through illegal methods, and don't. Present your property and your wealth to the rulers. Let ta kulu farika minam walid das with the intention that you eat up some part of the people's property with ism, with sin, unjustly. Wal tum taalamun and you do it knowingly. This is the rishwa. This is you know with what that you present to the people bribery. You present your money to the judge or to the authority, someone who can do some favor to you. Whatever favor he is doing to you, if he is a government official, it is at the cost of the interest of the government. And if there is some dispute, some case in the in the court of a judge, and you have pleased that judge through bribery, well, he will do you favor, and he will do wrong to the other party. so you are eating the property and the wealth of the other party by giving your wealth to the judge to the authority to the person who is sitting in judgment on that matter so don't do it this is called bribery and actually the hadith ar rashi wal murtashi kila huma fi nar rashi means the person who gives bribe generally we think that rashi is the person who is accepting bribe and who is eating bribe On the contrary, in Arabic language, 
the rashi is the person who is giving bribe and murtashi is the person who is accepting bribe so rashi is more important the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has first mentioned rashi the person who is who is presenting and who is offering bribe he is rashi and here in the quran also we are finding that the mention is make, being made of the people who are giving bribe now tudlu biha ila al hukam don't give your mal your property your wealth to the rulers in order that you may eat up and you may usurp the property or wealth of other people bil ism unjustly and antum talabun and you might be knowing it will fully doing it then it is haram for you now what is the logical relationship of this ayah with this section this section started with taqwa kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun what is the criterion for taqwa the criterion for taqwa is if you are eating halal you are muttaqi if you are eating haram you are not muttaqi you may be very pious apparently you may be maybe worshiping you know not five prayers a day but 10 prayers a day but if you are eating haram you are not at all muttaqi the real criterion of taqwa is that you must eat and you must earn through halal means and not through haram means barakallahu li wa lakum fil quran al azim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayat wa zikr al hakim allahu akbar The Islamic Organization of North America, IONA, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing IONA is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations. first on themselves their families inform their friends and then to invite the non-muslims to islam the ultimate goal is to seek allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter for more information about iona please visit us at www.tanzim.us you may also email us at info@tanzeem.us or call our toll free number 866779 IONA join us together we can make a difference